Everybody was nice to Typical invisible dog fence installation is normally designed to be a single loop around the perimeter of one's home. There may be offshoots from the main line to guard gardens or pool areas, but these are typically configured as part of the main fence and everything is either on or off. This is less than desirable configuration because of the problem that we just saw in the video. There may be times when we do not want the entire yard available to the dog, such as when we're expecting delivery or when we have a picnic or party in the backyard and we'd like to not have a beggar around. Sure, we could chain the dog up in these circumstances, but didn't you buy that fancy invisible fence so that you wouldn't have to chain the dog? A more desirable fence configuration is one where the dog's owner's yard is divided into logical zones that the dog can be confined to when the situations occur. In this diagram, we can see that the yard has been divided into three zones. So in this example, zone one is the area where the dog's house and water and food poles reside. It might be desirable to have a small zone like this for when there are kids visiting and you want to confine the dog to the smallest area as possible. Zone 2 basically covers the rest of the backyard, but it does not allow the dog access to the driveway. This is important since it allows us to give the dog room to run, but doesn't allow him to jump on visitors or delivery men that we may be expecting. And finally, Zone 3 is the rest of the yard. It's important to point out here that it is possible to have any combination of zones enabled at one time. In an invisible defense system, the zones are actually a buried wire that acts as a large closed loop radio antenna. A dog wears a receiver on his collar that notifies him when he is close to the antenna by giving a series of beeps. If the dog should continue to walk closer to the fence, then he will receive a high voltage shock to help remind him to go back. When two wires in the antenna are twisted, then the signal nullifies itself for that section of the fence and the collar is not activated. This makes it possible to have multiple zones enabled at the same time because these borders where the zones meet will not block the dog. I should point out that one of the main reasons that few fences are installed this way is that there really isn't a good controller system on the market to allow the homeowner to quick and easily activate and deactivate zones. Most transmitters, such as this one, are designed for a single zone installation and only have two inputs. To enable a different zone or multiple zones requires complicated and time-consuming manual rewiring, usually in one's garage or crawl space. Since it's impossible to see an invisible dog fence in action with one's eyes, I decided to build a model yard for the project that is similar to the zone diagram that we just saw. The zones are indicated by different colored arrays of LED lights. Since each of the LED arrays is on a single electrical circuit, we can easily simulate the invisible fence zone since both only require a closed loop in order to operate. In the model yard, the radio signal is replaced by a DC current, but since all we really care about is continuity in circuit, the same hardware and software designs will work for both. The controller for this project is, of course, the Tahoe 2 development board made by Device Solutions that was provided by Microsoft. I'm utilizing the touch screen to activate or deactivate the zones. The zones are predefined in this proof of concept, but if the device were commercialized, a desktop or perhaps a web-based application would be developed to allow the user to either provide a photo of their yard or locate an aerial photo using live maps. The user could then draw the zones on the image and save the image in polygon data to an SD card, which the controller would then read. I'm utilizing point and polygon algorithm to determine which zone has been touched. The lack of a built-in point and polygon app function was one of the first big shortcomings I discovered in the micro framework. This is a very useful function to have for any device that utilizes touch. To switch the zones on and off, I'm using the ZAD SR1610 Pro XR relay board made by National Control Devices, which is powered by XB Wireless Communications. This particular board has four banks of four relays for a total of 16. This is certainly overkill for this project since I only need one relay per zone. A commercial version of this board could certainly achieve a lot of cost savings by using a simpler relay board. 
Here you can see a very simple circuit on the spread board. This is really no more than a junction box between the relay board and its own loop wires. There is a 12 volt DC power source on the relay board that I'm using to power the LED array circuits. To use this circuit with an invisible dog fence transmitter, we will simply replace the DC source with connections to the radio transmitter. A standard RJ45 keystone jack is used to junction the wire pairs on the model yard with those on the breadboard. This simply allows the model yard to easily be separated from the other electronics. Here you can see that when we touch one of the zones on the controller that the zone state is reversed. The current state of the zone is indicated by a yellow border around the zone if it is activated or there is no border if the zone is not activated. In other words, the zones with borders are the areas where the dog is confined to. By default, all of the zones are activated on power-up. This is a security measure to prevent the dog from escaping in the event of a short power outage. The state of the zone is determined by requesting the information from the relay board rather than just storing a flag within the controller itself. This is also an important security measure to prevent the state from getting out of sync between the relay board and the controller in the event that the controller is powered off and the relay board is not. Since the controller is meant to be battery powered and portable, this is an important feature. The zones had to be drawn using the draw polygon function in the presentation framework. I discovered another deficiency in the micro framework during this part of the development. Apparently it is not possible to specify a line width, although all the help documents specify otherwise. In fact, if I had to specify my biggest complaint about the micro framework, it would be that the lack of documentation available. To implement the XP communications, I am very graciously borrowing Michael Schwartz's toolkit. Unfortunately, at the time of our development, the DAHO 2 board did not have SD card support, or I would have gone ahead and made the yard image and zone polygon data read from the SD card. Currently, these are static resources. Due to the fact that the majority of the functionality I needed was either available in the micro framework or in Michael Schwartz's toolkit classes, this project did not require a lot of sophisticated development. In fact, it was developed in under 500 lines of code, which were hardly worth reviewing due to their triviality. Here we can see how the fence transmitter is connected to the relays. Unfortunately, at the time of development, my transmitter was not working probably due to a lightning strike and I was not able to actually test for any differences that might have occurred due to transmitting a radio signal instead of a DC current. But I have no doubt that it will work for its intended application. The only concern might be that the electronic relays could introduce noise into the radio frequencies that could interrupt the signal. I have no doubt that that problem could be resolved using different relays or shielding, but that's really a problem for electronics engineers, not a software engineer. The next phase of this project will be to develop a Windows Home Server plugin that would utilize webcams that looked into each of the zones and allowed the homeowner to switch the zones remotely from an internet connection. Due to a lack of time and resources, this part of the project was not completed at this time. I also felt that this was unimportant since I would not need to utilize the micro framework to make this work. Being able to control the relays from any location in the house is a big benefit of using XP and separating the relays from the controller. By making the control portable, the user also is able to control the zones while in the yard and can see what the location of the dog is. This would be difficult from inside one's garage or crawl space. I've greatly enjoyed having the opportunity to use the Tahoe 2 board and learning the micro framework, and I want to thank Microsoft for this opportunity and the really cool hardware. I have many more ideas for projects in the future, and I look forward to learning even more about the framework in the upcoming months. If you'd like to learn even more about the project and keep up on my future projects, please visit my blog at http://blog.inly.info.